Good evening. Welcome to the opening of Guanwei Art Exhibition, Essence, Energy, Spirit, at Australian China Institute for Arts and Culture in Western Sydney University. Western Sydney University acknowledges that tonight's opening is being held on the country of Darug people, of Darug nation, and acknowledges their ancestors who have been traditional owners of their country for thousands of years. We would also want to acknowledge and pay our respect to the Darug people's elders, past and present. I'm the MC tonight, and I'm newly appointed a director of Australian China Institute for Arts and Culture, ASIAC. My Chinese name is Han Jing. My English name is Jing Han. <laughs> An example of integration of cultural differences. Um, I came from SBS, where I have worked for 23 years, while I have also been academic at a Western Sydney University since 2006. I'm very excited for this opportunity, leading this institute to be a distinctive institute, making contributions to the understanding and the communication between Australian and Chinese cultures through arts and cultural exchange and researchers. I'm looking forward to having partnerships and, and collaborations with artists, researchers, arts and cultural institutions in Australia, in China, and across the Sinosphere. Tonight, we are very honored to have the renowned artist Guangwei, the Vice Chancellor and the President of Western Sydney University, Professor Barney Glover, the Senior Deputy Vice Chancellor of Western Sydney University, Professor Denise Kirkpatrick, the Deputy Vice Chancellor and the Vice President of Sydney, Western Sydney University, Professor Deborah Sweeney, the Chair of ASIAC Advisory Board, Dr. Jeff Raby. We also have distinguished guests, the Education Councillor from Chinese Consulate General, Mr. Niu Wenqi, the Council from Chinese Consulate General, Mr. Hou Yongfeng, the Founding Director of ASIAC, Professor Jocelyn Che, New South Wales Art Gallery Chinese Art Curator Cao Ying, Manager of a Research White Rabbit Gallery Louisa Guest, the Chief Operating Officer of Oswan Wendy Mao, ASIAC Advisory Board members including Distinguished Professor Ng N, Dr. Harlan Shem Ho, Kevin Hopgood Brown, Sally Beaumont, Annette Shua, and Professor Su Ming Wang. We also have Pro-Vice-Chancellor Pro of Western Sydney University, Ich Professor Yi Chen Lan, uh, Pro-Vice-Chancellor Dean of the School of Humanities and Communication Arts, Professor Peter Hutchins, as well as Professor Mabel Lee, artist Shen Jiawei, and Zhu Tian Li, and all other distinguished guests and friends. Thank you all for honoring Guangwei Art Exhibition and for your support of ASIAC. Now please welcome Professor Barney Glover, Vice Chancellor and President of Western Sydney University to give the opening speech. Thank you, Jing. That was a lovely welcome. And uh, welcome to all of you here to the Guangwei Exhibition opening, Essence, Energy, Spirit. I'd also like, though, to acknowledge that today's exhibition is being held on the country of the Baramatical people of the Darug Nation and acknowledge their ancestors who have been the traditional owners of their country for tens of thousands of years. And I also acknowledge and pay my respects to elders past and present. Fortunately, Professor Hahn has gone through a very exhaustive link, uh, list of those special guests who are here. So I won't repeat all of that, but I'd like to extend a particularly warm welcome, of course, to Guam Wei, whose uh, artwork we're delighted to be exhibiting here at ASIAC. So a particular welcome to Guam Wei. 
Uh, it is always vitally important for me to acknowledge Dr. Jeff Raby, the chair of the ASEAC Advisory Board. Jeff, good to see you. Of course, our great friends from the uh, consulate here in Sydney, so uh, education councillor and councillor, thank you so much for being here with us. We have a number of members of our ASEAC Advisory Board that are here, and Jing mentioned those, and I just wanted to say we had our first ASEAC Advisory Board meeting uh, with our new board today and our new director. So it was very exciting for us and a great meeting, a lot of uh, energy about the future of this great institution here at Western Sydney University. So we are very, very honoured to hold Guangwei's exhibition here at ASEAC. Uh, it's actually interesting that this year is uh, Western Sydney University's 30th anniversary uh, year. We were created on the 1st of January 1989 as a university, the University of Western Sydney, changed our name slightly in between, but uh, began in the early part of 1989. Guangwei came to Australia in 1989 and he is of course a highly prominent and well-respected Chinese-Australian artist having held over 60 solo exhibitions in Australia, China and across the world. So we age together, our university in Guangwei. And you have become so prominent as we are becoming prominent. This is a lovely synergy. At present, there are three, in fact, Guangwei solo exhibitions currently being held uh, at the Museum of Contemporary Art, at the Martin Brown Contemporary, and, of course, here at ASIAC. So such a tribute to your work and such wonderful work that it is. Uh, Guangwei's art is known for its uh, highly symbolic representation of the human condition an exploration of the relationship of mankind with the environment and nature. In his art, he oscillates between different worlds and cultures and has developed a distinctive and iconic style that combines Chinese traditions with Australian influences. This exhibition comprises three series, Longevity for Beginners, Return to the Origin and An Untitled Exhibit. Through the exhibition, Guangwei embeds his humorous yet deeply philosophical perception, bringing thousands of years of Chinese culture to the critical contemplation of human life in this technology-driven and fast-paced modern world. We look forward, if you haven't already seen the exhibition in detail, look forward, you should look forward to having an opportunity to study it in, uh, in a little more detail after we finish the uh, the speeches this evening. Now, ASEAC itself, the Australia-China Institute for Arts and Culture, plays a strong role in strengthening our relationships between Australian and Chinese communities through arts, cultural exchange and collaborative research. And we're very pleased that the ASEAC is one of our flagship institutes that strengthens our link between Australia and China and celebrates that contribution we make to a better understanding, a better bilateral understanding of our two cultures. ASEAC is very pleased to celebrate the extraordinary contributions that Aust Chinese Australian artists such as Guangwei have made to Chinese and Australian art and to promoting an understanding between Australian and Chinese people and culture. We're also very pleased, as we know from uh, Jing's comments a moment ago, we're delighted, of course, to have recently appointed Professor Jing Han as our new director of ASEAC to take over from Professor Labo Wang, and as we heard earlier, Professor Jocelyn Che, who was our wonderful inaugural director of ASEAC. So we're very, very fortunate to have Jing as our new director. She's already exhausting us on the board. We're, we're contemplating more board meetings, in fact, just to try and manage the uh, workflow from Jing as she uh, explores a whole range of new opportunities for ASEAC in partnerships and in relationships both here in, in Sydney, but importantly in China as well. And I know she's planning a, a very big trip to China uh, in November. Uh, and I'm looking forward to, I've had the privilege of traveling to China with Jing on a number of occasions now. Uh, usually in March of each year. So, Jing, you'll have to be in China again in March next year. So we'll uh, continue to build and develop those important links between Australia and China and Australian University here and, uh, and Chinese universities uh, next year. Professor Han, of course, is an international expert in subtitling and translating Chinese culture and is highly regarded for her intercultural competence and insight. I'm confident that under her leadership, 
ASEAC will continue to develop its distinctive role in the arts and culture sector through collaborations, partnerships and engagements with Chinese Australian communities here in Australia, in China and throughout the Sinosphere. It will be wonderful to see this exhibition, of course, as an example, but there'll be many more to come. We're looking forward to a very vibrant program of engagement uh, here on this campus in terms of Chinese Australia arts and culture. Thank you all for joining us here today. It's a very exciting moment for us. Enjoy the evening. Thank you. Thank you, Vice-Chancellor, for your great speech and especially your kind words about me. I feel absolutely no pressure. <laughs> uh, tonight, we're very pleased to have the expert, collector and curator of Chinese contemporary art, as well as highly accomplished diplomat of Australian-China relations, uh, the chair of ASIA uh, Advisory Board, Dr. Jeff Raby, as our guest speaker. Please welcome Dr. Jeff Raby to give us the speech. Uh, thank you, uh, Han Jing. You see, my Chinese is so great, I, I refer to you as Han Jing. I've got it right. Um, I'm delighted to be here this evening. Welcome, everyone. Um, uh, Vice-Chancellor, thank you very much for those introductory comments and uh, for your unstinting uh, support for ASEAC um, and uh, the university's commitment to this very, very important institution uh, in the Australia-China relationship. Um, uh, 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 Consul from the Consul General, thank you very much for coming. We greatly appreciate the Consulate's support for the work here and uh, it's very much part of the conversation we need to keep going. Uh, Fellow board members, um, thank you. And we did have a very lively and stimulating uh, board meeting this afternoon. And uh, Han Jing pointed out the two hours wasn't nearly enough. Uh, but I said, not whilst I'm chairing, it's, it'll do. <laughs> but uh, we are delighted to have uh, Han Jing uh, here. Uh, in the short time she's been here, the energy and enthusiasm she's brought to the job has been remarkable. Um, and I look forward to our future work. But tonight's really all about Guam Wei. And certainly my comments are all about Guam Wei because I've uh, actually opened, uh, uh, Guam Wei tells me, 10 of his previous exhibitions. So uh, the vice chancellor's informed us that Guam Wei's had 60 exhibitions, so I'm uh, responsible for one sixth uh, of the opening. So I feel quite proud about that. I also am a big collector of uh, Guam Wei's work. Uh, this is Guam Wei's um, uh, advice, not mine, but his biggest collector apparently is Kate Blanchett. Um, and I do know that Kate's made trips to Beijing just to go to Guan Wei's studio and to look at his work and presumably buy some. Guan Wei tells me, but I think he's being nice to me, that I'm the second biggest collector <laughs> in the world. But like often with statistics, and you know, I'm an economist. What's an economist with his head in the oven and his feet in the refrigerator? Uh, on average, he's comfortable. So I suspect there's a very big gap between Kate Blanchett's collector, collection and the number two collector. Um, I've known Guan Wei uh, since 1986, and I first saw uh, Guan Wei's work uh, in a private exhibition in uh, Nick Chose's apartment. Nick was the, um, no, Carrillo, Carrillo, no, it was later, sorry, it must have been 89, because Nick was, 88, 88, thanks, Guan Wei. Age, it has that effect. So it would have been 1988 at, uh, Jenguo uh, Menwai Weijiu Gongyu, the diplomatic compound on Chang'an in Beijing. And uh, Nick had organized uh, uh, an exhibition in, Guam, in, uh, in his apartment of Guan Wei's work. And it was just remarkable. I hadn't seen work like that before. And it was so wry and humorous. And there was a naughtiness about the whole thing that spoke to me in some way. Um, but but uh, it's also an interesting connection with Western Sydney because uh, Nick Joseph's had a lot to do with the university here. Um, and I should actually acknowledge Jocelyn, who's also very much part of uh, that experience setting up uh, the institute. But uh, uh, Nick has continued to keep that association. His predecessor was Carrillo Gantner, who gave a fabulous speech here. And it's so fitting to have uh, Guan Wei's exhibition here uh, at Western Sydney. Um, uh, in many, many ways, there's a trend, there's a tradition, and you went a year after that to uh, Australia, built your career in Australia, and then returned in uh, 09, I think, to uh, Beijing, 
where your career has gone from strength to strength. Uh, the Vice Chancellor mentioned that Guam Wei um, has uh, currently three exhibitions, which was one of the lines I was going to surprise you with, but uh, it's, it's not going to be much impact now. However, I can add some detail. The exhibition at the MCA, uh, Museum of Contemporary Art at Circular Quay, and if you haven't seen it, please go, uh, is a solo exhibition. That's tremendous credit for any artist to have a solo exhibition at the MCA, and it comprises a huge uh, mural work, um, and it is an amazing achievement. And my sense is, in all the years I've known Guam Wei, and all the years I've been collecting, suddenly uh, Guam Wei is getting... Uh, his, his profile is taking off. There's an acceleration in recognition of Gromway's work. And it's, it's a long road, being an artist, a hard road. Uh, you've done well in recent years, but there are many years of just dedication to the art. And Gromway, like a number of the contemporary artists uh, from China, particularly the Beijing group that I know well, have just dedicated themselves to their art. They haven't deviated from their artistic calling and their vision and the stories they want to tell through their work. It hasn't been a commercial um, venture. Uh, Guomai's work doesn't fit the categories of contemporary Chinese art. In fact, when my collection was being catalogued, Damien Smith, who I think is a brilliant, brilliant uh, curator, identified Guomai's work as one of a few which at first seemed very, very difficult to categorise and then uh, uh, realised and said that this work actually was contemporary Chinese, um, uh, 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 contemporary Chinese uh, surrealist work. And no one, no one before had categorised this work as surrealist. No one actually thought about contemporary Chinese art in those terms, in surrealism. And so uh, there's a whole, I think you'll see, academic discussion and analysis and discipline will develop around um, a more sophisticated understanding of the Chinese contemporary art period and this notion of uh, surrealism amongst the contemporary artists I think will be something that will be talked about for a very, very long time. So look, I've spoken much longer than I intended to speak. I hope it's been something of an insight uh, into Guam Wei and I'm happy to talk later about all the dinners and lunches and the Baijiu Guan Wei and I have consumed together over 30 years and some other stories. But uh, for now, uh, congratulations Guan Wei. As you can see, we are immensely excited that you're here and with us and we have this exhibition and I hope everyone here this evening uh, enjoys it as much as I do. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your wonderful story. We should have allowed, uh, allocated 20 minutes longer. Um, I've always admired Guan Wei's very distinctive uh, art and uh, his incredible achievements and successes in Australia, being a migrant and being an artist. But having had the opportunity to know Guan Wei in person, I found him not only hugely talented and intelligent, with a great sense of humor, but also very personable, kind and easy to talk to, which I found very touching and admirable. Please welcome the one and only Guan Wei to give us the artist's speech. Uh, thank you for GF and uh, sorry, I, I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dear Professor Barak. Uh, because after the, this afternoon, I have two hours of meeting yeah, with uh, Han, and uh, you know, I'm very dizzy, and after drink. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and um, yeah, before I haven't uh, taken like two hours of meetings, you know, because I'm artist just stay in the studios, you know, doing my some works. But now I feel I come back to the Tijinai, how to say? Yeah, you know, artists are just free, you know, in the studio or something. But um, this afternoon I'm serious and stay there to listen to the professor and the GF talking on the education and the art exchanging and the some things. And um, yeah, I'm very glad I became the new members for the Australian China's uh, 
Yeah, institute or something. So I should be take my responsibilities, do something <laughs> for the build up the Australian and the Chinese culture exchanging or something. Yeah, because I have a big project next year in the Casula Powerhouse. I will curate a big Chinese contemporary show uh, called the Long Mai, uh, Pot of the Dragons, and we will show in the in the here. And uh, I was a uh, not artist, also I'm the curators. Anyway, and uh, I'm very happy, you know, have the show in the uh, in the Western Sydney. But this is my not not my uh, first time. Uh, before I did uh, two group show, but in the old uh, campus in the parents Paris, Paris, uh, Paris, yeah, Paris and uh, with the Xiao Lu and uh, Tang Song. I think 1996, yeah, 1996, yeah, but it's a long time ago. And um, anyway, uh, this month, uh, they call it like a Guanmei's month because I <laughs> had three solo shows in the uh, same month. And uh, somebody says, told me, yo, it's uh, crazy. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, but this is just a coincidence you know, because uh, yeah, MC gave me the first show. Uh, it's uh, 19... Uh, uh, for, uh, yeah, 14, yeah, 14 this month, and the one week later is the Martin Brown. Yeah, and then the week after, yeah, is uh, in, the, in the here. And, um, yeah, but I'm very glad that yeah, it has a show because many people come in and uh, looking at some of the different uh, the, the kind of the works. Yeah, MC is a big mirror and uh, the, the animations, some works, and uh, Martin Brown is uh, like a screens and uh, uh, um, the new works, but uh, here is my s another three different kind of the work, but I never shows uh, uh, in Australia. So this is like my secret uh, uh, the, in my storage. But uh, when the Jeff and the Han, you know, yeah, tell me you should be show something. I said, okay, yeah, uh, for the put some very my secret things to take off to like like us to, to look in. Yeah, just like you know my three shows gave the people different uh, feelings. Yeah, when you're looking the MC's one you want must wow some big like the eighteen meters or something walk there. And uh, the Martin Brown are looking out pretty and uh, some things but uh, for for the so here is more academic. Because this is university, <laughs> I should, uh, you must be thinking more about this uh, the work. You know, this work not easy can be understand. <laughs> yeah, this uh, you should be yeah to look in my writing, writing world or something, and to thinking about this, and um, yeah, because this is in the university, you must uh, to take it serious. You know, these uh, three kind of work, you know, are focused on the here. Yeah, not I would say <laughs> Martin Brown. I think here is important because for the um, uh, young student, yeah, this is like uh, Chairman Mao said, this is the 早晨八九点钟的太阳, like uh, the sun in the morning, like uh, eight or nine. You know, they you know, they give the more energy and the positive energy for young uh, student is very important. Yeah, they can maybe give you some ideas, and uh, who knows? Maybe one day this young the, uh, student became the prime minister. They can put a lot of money for the art, <laughs> and maybe they became the. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a very important thing, and also maybe the. When the artist became the big boss or something, you know, can collect my works. <laughs> yeah, I can make my, can be, continue to do my work. And uh, yeah, it's interesting, you know, now I've been living in Australia for uh, 30 years. And uh, yeah, I meet sometimes the young people, sometimes, sometimes they tell me, oh, uh, I follow you a long time. When I was little, I just looking your show in here. And uh, because in this show, this is my 71 solo shows. <laughs> This is my 71, not 60, 71, 71. And, uh, but this 70, most of the show in the Australia, but also in China, in or Europe, or in somewhere, but mostly in uh, Australia. You know, this show is my fourth solo show in the, this year. I did one in the Perth uh, in the May this year. Yeah, three in here. This is the, and also I take uh, 350 group shows. Yeah, when you look at my the, the 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 
the, the biography, you know, the CV, oh, when I came into Australia, only half a page, but now it's 25 pages or something. <laughs> and that's why I was thinking, oh, I did quite a lot of things in Australia. And uh, uh, I'm very glad I came to Australia. Also, I like to build up for Australian culture or some things. And uh, yeah, thank you for all coming join my show. And uh, I will continue and uh, do more the good things, you know, for Western Sydney University, also for the new members of my new roles, you know, for the Australian China Committee or something. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Guanwei, for your very inspiring speech. We will particularly watch out which student passing by pay a bit more attention. That's probably promising Prime Minister next year or the year after. Uh, now, please, uh, let me introduce our new addition uh, to ASIAC, uh, Dr. Nicholas Ng. Uh, Nick has recently joined the Institute as a research fellow and a uh, researching uh, artist. Uh, Nick is uh, an anthromusicologist specializing in Australian and China music exchange. Nick is also an accomplished musician, uh, composer, m m musical director and performer. He has collaborated with many music and arts festivals and his research area is documenting history of uh, Australian China musical exchange. So tonight we are very proud to have our own musician to play the Chinese traditional music instrument, Arhu. Please welcome Dr. Nicholas Un. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for the introduction, Professor Han. Um, while the um, um, guys here are sitting up, um, Dr. Professor Han has asked me just to introduce the pieces I'm going to play for you, because music is quite an abstract thing. And um, I've got two very short pieces, because I know you probably just want to get on with it. And um, <laughs> the first piece is a, a composition called Liang Xiao, um, and it was composed in 1928 on the 22nd of January by Mr. Liu Tianhua. And if you know music, you'll probably recognize this name because he was um, probably known um, by most of China as the father of um, um, the uh, national music of China in the 20th century. And he was also a great reformer of this instrument that I play called the Arhu, um, uh, bringing it into the contemporary world. Um, and um, he improvised this piece on the eve of Chinese New Year because of a gathering of his students and friends. And this piece, this improvisation, has now become a composition. And I chose this piece because of a similar situation here of um, a gathering of friends. And um, it's my great honor to be playing in front of um, Guan Wei. Um, I thought I'd mention, Guan Wei, that your work has inspired me a lot over the years because I've often found myself performing in art galleries in front of your paintings, not directly in front, but you know, in the same sort of um, um, solo works and at the National Gallery and at GOMA and so forth. So, thank you.
And finally, a special surprise, um, a composition I've written for a touring children's show called Flight of the Dragon, and it features an instrument known as the hulu si from the southwest of China, which has since, um, well, in recent years, become more mainstream in the Chinese music scene. Um, it's essentially a vegetable. It's a gourd on top, and, and traditionally it's stored for uh, storing liquor. It's used for storing liquor. But I assure you there's no liquor in here right now, so thank you. Amazing. Uh, you know, it's hard to imagine that a Negro grew up in Australia and playing this. I get really emotional, and uh, you know, it's just uh, if anyone who wants to loan Nick, if you pay hefty, that we will consider. <laughs> and now it's the time to have a more fun. Um, not everyone, including myself, is uh, confident when we admire, you know, um, artworks, especially contemporary art. Uh, many people are afraid to asking questions because in case they are seen as ignorant. As you know, we have traditional Chinese and we have simplified Chinese. I am a simplified Chinese. So tonight I'm going to ask the artist the simplified questions uh, which might have been sitting on your mind when you look at Guangwei's art. Please welcome Guangwei to join me for a softer quiz. Okay. Second, uh, again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's play soft. This song? Okay. First question. Um, in all your paintings, your human figures only have a gaping mouth. They have no eyes. Or uh, they only have half-closed eyes, which must be cut and paste, because they look exactly the same on every face. So my question is, is that because you don't know how to draw human eyes? Yeah, this is a very good question. And uh, yeah, many people ask me why you only paint one eye and sometimes only the mouth. And uh, uh, I think this is a long time, yeah, like a 30 history, you know, I paint one eye and one mouth. Uh, because, you know, I'm from the, you know, the traditional learning the Russian or some style, I can make a very realistic style, like one, the eyes and the clicker, like uh, someone's, uh, yeah, I can do this. But uh, uh, I feel this uh, maybe in the kind of can, you know, to make it more interesting. And uh, when I, well, after three, 30 years, you know, developed uh, like my uh, uh, figures, you know, uh, I try many times, you know, to give these uh, people eyes and the, 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 the everything in here. But I just feel more difficult. I feel this is not right. <laughs> Yeah, I did many times give the yeah, two eyes and the mouth, but uh, later I just take off. 
<laughs> and also my, you know, my painting, uh, my the figures are always uh, is nude, not close. And also I try many times to give the clothes, but the final I should take off. <laughs> I, I just feel, you know, this uh, if you have the clothes, this um, more detail does feel you should be talking nationalities mm -hmm. and your uh, this person who is and um, something I feel is not quite right, you know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think I concern the whole of the human beings or something. That's why. It's, uh, yeah, now just one eye and one mouth. I think this uh, for the human living in the universal, that's enough. Yeah, this is my <laughs> wonderful <laughs> answer. It's a really good answer to my very simple question. A uh, question two. I read online that in 2000, when we could still trust what we read, that before your exhibition was opened, all your paintings were sold out, and you were very upset. So is that the reason why you choose this institute for your exhibition, knowing that we will make sure your art won't sell. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, this is uh, the another story, you know, because when I was, uh, my first solo show in the MCA is the 1990s. They gave me 10 years anniversary shows. And uh, also, just like this time, uh, one week or two weeks later, the Sherman Gallery gave me the solo show. Yeah, before the openings, the, the old work is sold out. Yeah, very sadly, because, uh, you know, your work is just like your babies, you know. You spend, uh, yeah, like 10 months, you know, the part of your <laughs> babies, but suddenly give to somebody. I feel, oh, this is not quite right. But this artist is very uh, difficult. If your work is not uh, one cell, you're still upset. <laughs> if all the cells are out, you still feel this is not quite right. You know, this is uh, yeah, a very difficult time, because, you know, if we, the not, not, not work has been sold, uh, what uh, for tomorrow for living? What the money can buy the, the, the rice or something, you know? Because the artists should be make a living f by the selling the works. Yeah, that's why this uh, very difficult times. And uh, yeah, this is the reason. Uh, also, uh, but why I chosen in the universities? Uh, just before I mentioned, yeah, university just the more interesting place, more academic uh, uh, the world, the, the, the areas. You know, the, for the art, yeah, one hand for the commercial, another hand you should for the academics. And the academic make you more power and uh, more uh, reputation or something. Also, they good for the <laughs> economy. Kind of also, yeah, just I mentioned that maybe one student became the Prime yeah, Minister. Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> you know, can collect your work also to, uh, but it's just joking. And uh, yeah, I, I like, you know, to exchange, you know, do the communicate with the young student and uh, some things. Yeah, that's why I chose here. Mm. Thank you. We are very honored for having been chosen. We'll make sure we'll keep your babies and <laughs> we'll keep you starving too. <laughs> Next question. In your paintings, you use a lot of symbols and signs to me to silence any questioning or criticism as any question will show ignorance. Is that your intention? Yeah, just the mentioned, you know, this is the, um, it's quite academic, you know, <laughs> quite academic. And for the paintings, yeah, for the first label, just like a cartoon and uh, uh, animation or some things. Uh, secondly, like a realistic or something. And when you're going to up, it's like abstract or something. But for the higher uh, the layers, like uh, metaphysical things. And I think I believe to the metaphysical things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but also I can do it in the very low, so like uh, the uh, cartoons series or something. And uh, yeah, I think this has many layers. And uh, when you're looking at my list works, uh, I use many simple and uh, uh, yeah, also some the, the simple figures. Mm -hmm. I just remake together, mm -hmm. give the people more like uh, high layers, like a metaphysical thing, like a philosophy and uh, for uh, interesting things. And uh, also this is one thing. Second thing is uh, I think uh, for the art, is a cre cre creative, creative, creative creation is very important. Mm -hmm. This, uh, because in my work, you can feel this is very different. It's very new, very individuals. Because you must use the new visual language. What the new, show, the new visual language from? You know, from the computer science, mm -hmm. from the many paperwork science, from the uh, uh, 
um, uh, also from the, like many sciences, the science mm -hmm. and the, like uh, uh, physical, uh, like uh, the how to say chemistry. Yeah, the chemistry. When you're looking, I had many little doubt. Also has the S on the. Uh, SOS, yeah, this is like a uh, or something, you know. Also, I try to make a new visual language. This is my work. That's why you're looking, yeah, it's quite a different, very new. Yeah, yeah this uh, yes. answer your question. So, <laughs> such a good explanation, it's really good. Um, my next question, one of the very iconic features in all your paintings is a cloud. Cloud is everywhere, uh, as we call, like a cloud. You must know, years ago, that one day we would live in the cloud as we are now. And really, we can't live without cloud. Uh, also, in your famous painting, Feng Shui, right now is exhibited in MCA, just mentioned. It was created in 2004 of all ugly or cute marine animals that Australians are famous for. You picked and painted a stingray. 2006, to everyone's shock and sadness, Stephen Irwin was killed by that stingray. So to me, you're a very good fortune teller, a <laughs> feng shui master. How do you get your vision? Yeah, probably I'm the feng shui master. I'm doing <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, the interesting thing, you know, when I came to the Australia uh, before I was in China, and the one, the fortune teller, you know, just uh, look at my fortunes. They said uh, your fortunes, your fortunes are very good for the south. You know, Li Nan. Oh. When you're going to south, you must uh, fire, must, must, must very good. And uh, you know, my first time came to Australia, not Sydney, this is in the Tasmania. It's uh, <laughs> south of the, you know, <laughs> of the global. <laughs> and uh, from Tasmania, two years, I came to Sydney, and uh, I'm very lucky, you know, came, became the. Yeah, anyway, and uh, yeah, for the cloud in my work, is very mm. important. You know, cloud, you know, just like, uh, it's many, some, yeah, many the meanings, you know, this is very beauty, and it also can be floating everywhere, and some things, and, uh, but now the cloud has another meanings, you know, for mm. computer, I think something put in there, like a story or some things. And uh, yeah, before I don't know this, <laughs> should be came like <laughs> this. But anyway, also for the, you know, my big picture has stingrays, Yes, I did this series, uh, uh, this is 2004, I did the big pictures. And uh, because I feel stingray also like, like a cloud, you know, it's oh, in, the, yeah, in the water, you know, very oh. yeah, gentle, very beautiful, you know, when you know, they, they, oh. they, they, they're swimming out, yeah. it's beautiful things. But by bad luck, you know, for the stingray, because they by accident by Steve. Yes, <laughs> yeah, stingray before had a good reputation. Good. After the story, yeah, stingray, every people, they say this murder hated it. <laughs> this is not my, <laughs> not my uh, force, I think. <laughs> yeah. oh, thank you for being mm. such a good feng shui master. And um, all your human figures have one very prominent uh, characteristic. They are all very chubby and pink, like piglets. And obviously, very well fed. Is that because you were born in the year of a famine? Yeah, that's right, you know, <laughs> because <laughs> away from the Sun <laughs> Yan, you know. Yeah, I think when I was little, yeah, it's a starving, it's uh, old times. Uh, I think I remember when my mother brought me to just eat some like uh, uh, yu tiao yu bing. Oh, yeah. I feel very happy <laughs> in the, some, you know, for the breakfast, the good first, breakfast. And uh, yeah. That's why I make my people now it's a little bit fat and pink and uh, also has another two meanings. But nowadays, you know, the uh, the rich people mm. not uh, not fat. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's the poor people. It's <laughs> much fat. And uh, yes, you know, this is still the yeah. And also these people, so, you know. Just like myself, you know. <laughs> when your artist is doing something, you know, just the, like you figure, because you know yourself uh, and uh, uh, very much. You know, some people sometimes just, uh, you know, come to my, the, the, came to with me and uh, ask me, this is like, 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 like you. <laughs> I said, okay, right, this is me. <laughs> That's why, you know, this uh, yeah, figure like myself. Yeah. My last question, on the uh, catalog, you can see that a self-portrait series uh, of 50 shades of a yellow or brown or black, you could have chosen. You choose the bleached white for your skin. Did you suffer the same disorder as Michael Jackson? 
<laughs> uh, anyway, uh, when I was uh, like a young student, I read one of the novels, called, I think it's by Japanese. The, this novel is talking about uh, Japanese has a girlfriend, is the, the white girl from Europe or something. When they when they together, you know, they, he still feel is embarrassed because he looking his skin the dark and the yellow or something. Yeah, this uh, this this story gave me so impressed, but this is a long time ago. And uh, yeah, for this my this uh, uh, self portrait called uh, uh, um, plastic surgery, but this is just like uh, erotic, you know, erotic. No, just talking how you can to involve for the mainland the Australian cultures. You know, talking the migration, how the difficult to join the mainstream the culture or some things. And uh, yeah, I think this the uh, yeah, long way for the every the migration or some things. And uh, yeah, they like to Australian uh, to, to recognize your work and they recognize your the value of some things. And uh, but on the, this uh, the the picture, I just make a drawings, but use many document documentary and the rubber stamps. How can change you from the uh, Chinese to the Australian? That means from like Guan Wei to the Dai Wei the Guan, something like this. <laughs> and uh, but I still like the um, the Asian face and also uh, Asian the, the background. I'm proud about this because Australian is multicultural things. I think this. Uh, uh, for everything, very, for everyone, very important things. Mm, okay, yeah. Thank you so much. You know, please give artist Guangwei a round of applause for his wonderful answers to my very simple questions. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, before we enjoy, you enjoy, we enjoy the light refreshments, I would like to acknowledge the generous sponsorship of, uh, from Oswan for supplying great Australian wine and for their sponsorship of the catalogue. I would also like to thank our project officer, uh, Lucy, uh, Lindsay Lu, uh, for her very hard work and the meticulous preparation. And our volunteers, who are our master uh, program students, and our uh, curator, Monica, for her much appreciated effort and uh, support and guidance. I'm very honored to be the MC tonight, and please enjoy Guangwei's artworks, light refreshments, and drinks and talk. Thank you so much.